That being said, I've got a f- I, I've got this little idea in my head, right? I'm not sure if it's a good idea, but I'm about three and a bit weeks away, or I'm thinking about just underneath, just under four weeks away until the Hackney Half Marathon starts, right? And the Hackney Half Marathon, if you're not familiar with it, is one of the premier half marathons in London as of, I don't know, only like a few years ago. I think I, I ran the first ever Hackney Marathon when it first started. Then I think I've missed out on... Then I ran, I ran the first ever one. Then I then I missed out on the second one. Then I ran the third one. Then I missed out on the last two. So I've, put, I've missed out on three of the last five, I think, right? So I've done quite a bit of them. Um... So this Hackney Half Marathon is usually the premier half marathon everyone does. You know the kind of half marathon they do in Berlin. The Berlin Half Marathon is very popular. So there's one in Copenhagen, I think. Um, there's a few that a lot of the scene people, a lot of the running hipsters kind of go to for the most part. You know the kind of dudes, isn't it? The kind of guys and girls who have tattoos on their legs and arms and they're usually used in Nike commercials because they look good on camera. Those kind of people um, usually run those kind of things because it's kind of split up. It's not a bad thing to say. I'm not throwing any shade, but there's a group of people that go to run races that are specifically aimed at people who run loads of races, right? The ones that kind of go and do like, you know, marathons in the middle of Italy somewhere. Um, There's places in France that they do them too. Um, there's a couple I've seen in Belgium, I'm pretty sure. There's ones that I do in Birmingham that are really popular. Um, ones in Chippenham, just outside of Birmingham. So there's a few that are dotted around the place, right? And these are like the premier ones that loads of the kind of elite, the kind of people that want to be, you know, the kind of the weekend, you know, the weekend cyclists, people that walk around or like ride around their bikes with those lycras on head to toe, pretending like they're in the Tour de France. They're like um, really enthusiastic about riding bicycles, aren't they? So there's a group of people like that in a running community too, who are really about the whole running lifestyle thing. They don't really wear that much gear. They haven't got a million and one gadgets all over their all over their bodies. They just usually have, you know, the running club. They're usually part of a running club as well. Those things that I'm not, I just don't give a fuck about that kind of stuff. Organized fun. You can just jump off a cliff. No, thank you very much. Um, but there's there's kind of people that are part of running clubs. So they usually just have like little little singlet on, um, some shorts and running shoes. That's about it. They don't really do anything. They, they sometimes they don't even wear headphones. They're that kind of militant with their running, which is fucking. You know, I can't imagine doing that personally. But um, for the hipster runnings, for the hipster for the hipsters out there who like to run, uh, stuff like the Hackney Half Marathon is a good place to go to because it's a great place to kind of you know meet up with some of your friends from the scene, spud spud spud, hang out, shake 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 hands, and do your thing. But it's also one of the most difficult courses that I've ever had to run. Um, it's incredibly flat. It's incredibly open. Oh, sorry, my back, my neck. Oh, where's copy? Anyway, it's incredibly flat, incredibly open. There's no real um, skyscrapers or tall buildings kind of covering where you're running. So for the most part, especially when it's in, 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 you know, in the last few years, we've had pretty good summers. And as evident as, as you can see the sun beaming through my window here, this this year is going to be no different. Um, if it's really warm around the time that the event's on, which is usually in the middle of, I mean, towards the end of May, then um, without the tall buildings, with it being just with it with the Hackney Half Marathon taking part in most, of, if taking part in like the new, well, taking part in like the new development areas around Trafford Olympic Park, which have been newly tarmacked and all that malarkey, the sun beating out on that tarmac, it kind of rising up again and heating up the entire roads, masses amount of people sweating and you know. Uh, vibe and um, heat from bouncing off each other it turns into an absolute sauna like a running version of a sauna right it's just absolutely incredibly hot you end up dripping loads of loads of sweat you end up losing a, a bunch of weight more so weight than the other girls mentioned yesterday um so it's a very challenging course right and then i think towards the end there's a few hills and you're passing the motorway up to up into olympic park it gets a bit hilly um it's just a really brutal course in that regard right flat no um no tall buildings to cover you from the sun sun beaming down on you um the first couple of years i did it there were limited water stations and people were fainting all over the place right they were literally dropping all over it's so probably the first time i've seen people just like dropping through heat stroke and probably just through pure fatigue as well because it just really saps out the energy of you having to run in that kind of sun um and then obviously over the over the over the years the hacking half marathon hacking but the vitality sport people right yeah vitality sport people sort of like refined the course set up more water stations they had those massive kind of um jet streams or little those big massive poles that have like water that spray out so you can run in it like kind of sort of like a uh, something that you see in a car wash and the other time it sort of improved but essentially it's the one place i've been to where my half marathon time hasn't improved right I think the, the first time I ran it, I must have did like, I don't know, just under two hours. The second time I did two hours and two minutes. Um, and my best time, of course, has come from the Barcelona Half Marathon, which I ran that in one hour and 45 minutes. But that, again, was a very advantageous course, right? It's loads of, it's loads of, it's loads of hills um, upwards and downwards. 
Um, it's extremely flat, loads of tall buildings. If you've been to Barcelona, you'd know that you know there's massive buildings, like flats that people live in. So you don't really get beaten down by the sun until you can't basically run across. The entire time I, I remember you getting really hit by the sun is when you're in that main city center bit with the pavilion. It's like a massive, I forgot, it's a massive like ornament in the middle where you kind of have to run around it, like a roundabout. That's where you get really beat up by the sun because it's quite flat and open. And then sometimes when you have to run by the coast in Barcelona, you kind of, where the beaches, sorry, you get hit by the sun. But for the most part, it's one of the most fastest races I've had to run in a long time. Uh, maybe second to only the Chippenham Half Marathon, which again, is extremely flat, not as open or as flat as the, as the Hackney Half Marathon. And it has a lot of downward hills that you can kind of, you know, pick up pace with. But I'm thinking that I should try and do the unthinkable and try and register myself and try and see if I can run a quick half marathon at the Hackney Half Marathon on the 19th of May. As I'm talking to you now, it's now the 24th of April. Um, I'll have just underneath, just under one, one, two, three, four. I'd have four months, basically just under four months, just under four weeks sorry, to train for it and to see what my time would be. Um, unfortunately, I've got. I think I've got it up here on the screen, right, for you guys to see. Unfortunately, I won't be able to buy a ticket for it because it's already sold out. Which I'm not really sure if that's true. Sometimes when when they say it's sold out, I'm not sure if they just do it just to kind of like drum up interest. But it's essentially sold out. Um, I have to run. At, um, the only way I can run with it is to do it by a charity. But obviously, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to be on social media begging people for money and stuff. I don't really care that much. This is the course, as you can see here. Um, it's a fairly unforgiving course. You normally start at Hackney Marshes, which is which is kind of the big park here in London where people play their Sunday league football. Then you head over up into Hamilton Hospital. Then you head up to Clapton, go back around, around Dawson, back again to Hackney Downs or around to Hackney Central, back again through Dawson Junction, back down, up again through Dawson, kind of towards Shoreditch, but not really over the water, back again around, all the way through Victoria Park. And then, where is that are we now? We're in Victoria Park Road, you pass Victoria Park again, over the water, back around again. White Post Lane, where the White Post Cafe is, which I go and party sometimes, Waterdown Road. And then this way, and then the kind of the last mile or so is kind of the brutal bit, because this is where there's a massive kind of speed bump, six to kind of the, where all the um, football state, the little football cages in, in Mabel Green, which I think is just, just in front of some of the flats as well. And then you kind of turn back around and head back into Hackney Marshall. So it's a very, very, very brutal course. I have to be honest. I think this is the main bit that gets really burning hot, where you kind of walk, go past Hackney Wick and stuff, like, like, because it's mostly an industrial park or where the kind of the buses and trains kind of stop. So it's not really the best place for you to go and run a race but you know say la vie so i'm not gonna do the running charity thing i have to get a ticket route through um you know someone reselling it on the events website which i've seen a couple of people who have posted up the fact that you know they're injured and won't be able to run the race i'll just kind of email somebody from there and get a ticket for them um so i won't be able to but the only the only problem with that is that you won't be able to run underneath your own name i have to run under the name of whoever the le guy or lady is that i'm buying a ticket from so it won't be an official race time which is unfortunate but i want to i just want to do it for myself so i feel i'm gonna do it. i feel i'm gonna try and push myself for for the next four weeks uh try and abstain from all the alcohol abstain from all the drugs abstain from all the going out and just go and train every single day until i can go and run uh a, a, a quite a good um half marathon time now, because I've only got four weeks left and I haven't really been training specifically for a half marathon, I've been doing mostly 5K um, running sort of uh, timings, whatever it may be. Even though I think if I look at my Nike run app now, I think for the most part I've been running, I've been running quite regularly, um, I think for the best part of the whole year, I think, isn't it, really? I have not, I've, I don't think there's a month where I haven't run. Uh, yeah, I, I did 17 runs in April, 19 runs in March... 16 in february 8 in january yeah so i've basically been running all month but i really need to up it um this month and kind of really go for the distance and stop going for the kind of the repeats that i've been going i've been doing a few times so i think the plan is i'm gonna probably try and get in a half marathon um practice run in for let's say the week before the race let's say the 12th right i'm probably gonna do one then just go just do a half marathon run and just see how quick see how quickly or slowly i can do that in so I can know I've got the mileage in. But then in the next few weeks, just fucking up the mileage. Again, it might be a stupid idea, but I think I need to lay myself a bit of a mark and give myself some, a target to go for. Um, and then hopefully that'll be um, something that'll keep me in, an, you know, keep me in a, in, a, in a straight and narrow between now and the end of the year. Um, because I don't know. I think I've, I, got, I got the feeling like I wasted time this year. I wasted four months just hanging around. Um, 
yeah, I, th- I think I wasted time just hanging around. Yeah, I think I wasted time hanging around. It's four, it's four weeks. Sorry, four months already of the, of the year have gone by. Um, I'm very conscious about time just floating by. And again, by the end of when I finish the Hackney Half Marathon, it'll be 19th of, of May. That'll be already five months out of the year. So I'm very conscious of like, okay, cool. I've wasted four months. Let me not waste another month. Let me just get back on the saddle and kind of go for it. So I'm go- going to set myself this weird target. It's a bit of a stretch goal. Um, it's a bit. It's going to be very difficult. I'm going to be in pain a lot. I'm pretty sure of it. But the plan is to go and run a Hackney Half Marathon. But the most important plan also is to get new running shoes. So I have to get those new running shoes pretty quickly. So I think as soon as I get paid at the end of the month, I'm going to go and buy some new running shoes and start training with them regularly. So I have, I've already had the mileage in them. I don't want to go and turn up to a race running in new running shoes because that's going to be, you know, a complete nightmare. So I'm going to try my best to get those running shoes sorted out prior to the date of me running. And then hopefully that should help um, with me going forward. But yeah, this is this is what I'm planning to do. So um, again, if you if you guys are out there and you are going to run the Hackney Half Marathon, let me know what training are you doing? What plan are you following? I think I'm just going to, basically follow the plan that I've been doing in the past speed endurance, but basically condense the plan and kind of like chuck out some in-between bits that I don't have time to do at now at the moment and just try and pile in as much work as I can for the time being. And then hopefully that'll give me enough of a base to kind of go for the run. Because I know I can run the race slowly. I can probably just jog it ambly around and probably end up in two hours, 30 minutes, right? I know I could probably do that, but I, I have too much... Um, I have too much of a competitive spirit to go around a Hackney Half Marathon run, um, essentially past some of my colleagues in the scene and some people that I know and not run it quickly. I have to run it at a fast pace. So that's probably what I'm going to do uh, this time um, by the end of the month. So let's see how it goes, man. Again, so if you're running it, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you're going to do, what training plan you're doing, how far forward are you. And if you know anyone that's got a ticket, that's going to, that, 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 even, you know what would be better, better? Even if somebody doesn't want to go and they're just sick and they just want to give me the ticket, that'll be even better. Because sometimes, you know, these people that buy tickets and oh, I've got an injury. It's like, come on, man. Do you have really have an injury or you just don't want to do it anymore? If you don't want to do it anymore, just give someone else a ticket so they can go and run the race, isn't it? But anyway, that's a story for another day. But that's my plan going forward. It might work, it might not, but let's see, innit? It's all about, it's all about trying with these kind of things. You've got to give it a go.